Na knife that near finger. I tell you this morning, you're all unstoppable. You got up early in the morning. You're here. I want everybody to look around at each other. No sleepy eye. Who looks at breakfast? <laughs> and I'm excited to be here. I want to thank KTSY. I want to thank Brian and Kevin. 1976. I started a little company. And I wanted to find out some things about creating a culture of connection. So what I did in the 80s, end of the 80s, how many of you have been up to the fish market up in Seattle? Raise your hand. Look at that. Look around the room. Now, would you say they have a culture of connection? So I'm going to tell you what they do. And what I started doing when I was 16 years old, I started a small auto detail company. What I realized was I was going to take my employees and I was going to do something. And I had this exercise to do. But in the 80s, I went up there and I said, how do they have so much culture here in the fish market? And I found out they meet every single morning. And John Wickedama was the owner of the fish market. And he got his guys together, and what he did was, he got them, they stretched. You know how when they toss the fish, they yell, oh, do it over there, no, do something over there, right? So we're gonna do something different. So I want everybody to stand up right now. Everybody stand up. Come on, let's go, let's stand up. We get the blood circulated a little bit. Here's what I'm gonna do. What I did find out is this. When you bring excitement into your company, you start to build culture. So three times we're going to yell, I'm excited. As loud as we can, I want these windows to rock. So on three, we're going to yell three times, I'm excited. One, two, three, I'm excited! I'm excited! I'm excited! All right, give yourself a round of applause. You know what's real interesting is with those guys that are yelling, they create a culture. They meet every single morning and they think about themselves. They think about how they can bring support to each other. And basically, we know now in today's society, it is absolutely true that we're so better connected along lines. We can take computers, we can connect to France, we can connect to anywhere in the world. Southeast Asia, we can do business. And yet, we're so disconnected. Why? Because we live in a virtual world. We take and we put the best things out on TikTok. We put the best things out on Facebook. We put the best things out on LinkedIn. And I would say that, are you being genuine? Do people really know you? How many people in this room actually know me? Raise your hand. Very few. Been around this town for 20 years. Well, that's on me. I'm not connecting with you. And the one thing about connection is this. If you want to have a culture of connection, computers, we already know, can connect with each other. They're actually doing AI. You can have a whole medical speech written for you now. You don't have to do any work. Computers will do everything for us. Building a culture of connection is about having the human connection. It's always been about the human side. So let me give you a couple stats that I researched. And I was telling Brian, my computer crashed at 11 o'clock last night. And I had to recreate everything. But I was doing research when I did it. If you ever heard of the Gallup polls, Gallup polls have found out the last couple of years, 57% of the people are experiencing stress at work. 48% are worried, 26 are sad, and 22% of people in work are angry. Why? Because we're not connecting as humans. A neuroscientist from UCLA did a study on the brain. What he found out was human connection is a superpower. It allows people to be smarter. It allows people to be happier. It allows people to be more productive. And what it does is it helps you cope with stress. TCU students in the psychology department did a study in the work environment. And amongst other things that produce in your brain when you're working is dopamine and serotonin. Dopamine, which is the pleasure, the satisfaction, the next deal, more energy. I call that the molecule of more. We're always wanting more. And yet in the work environment, we also produce serotonin. And serotonin happens with human connection. 
What it does is it gives you a sense of connection to people, a calmness, and that's what it does. So I want to ask you this question. How many of you think your work is the most important relationship of your life? Interesting. No one raised their hand. Very interesting. So most of you work from 8 to 5, maybe 8 to 6. Got eight, nine hours of work. In the morning, if you have kids, you spend, what, an hour with them? They get off to school, right? One hour. You get home, you have two hours to have dinner with them. You have two hours. You spend three hours. Yet your work relationships, and none of you raised your hand. Not one of you. The best relationship and the most important relationship, and I always say this, is God first. Family second. Work third. And if you don't have that in that order, you might want to take a look at some things. Now, in the old ways, what we did was, without computer, back in 1976, when I had a company, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a second, but when I had a company, we did business with what? No, like, and trust, right? And that's how we did business before computers came along. We talked to people. We got to know them. We liked them or we didn't like them. We trusted them or we didn't trust them. In the new way, it's taking the technology that we have, leveraging the technology to do what it does best. It's bringing global teams together. It's creating, inspiring people. That is how business is done. So how do we connect in this digital world? Well, let me tell you this. I say it's this. I say we have to connect. One thing that I had to do was, in order in 1976, I ran a little, small, mobile detail company. But before I started, I wanted to find out how to be successful. So I started seeking out leaders. But more importantly, I had to find out my connection with God. When I got connected with God, my core values came up. If you have not worked on your core values, I highly, highly recommend it. And the reason why I did that was I wanted to find out who I was, who I could bring to a business, how I can bring it to connect people. By getting my core values, I was allowed to come up with a mission statement. From there, the beliefs. Beliefs is what do I believe about business? I was 16 years old. My natural beliefs came up. I didn't have enough capital. I didn't have enough education. I wanted to know my limiting beliefs. I wanted to know what my limiting beliefs were of my coworkers as well as limiting beliefs of my clients. Maybe I had resources. Maybe they believed they couldn't do something. From there, basically, your attitude is how you feel. Now, if you believe in your core values, if you get connected with your core values in God, I believe how you feel is much better. You will walk into restaurants. I do this with all my clients. I coach, I do workshops. I see you're gonna get up in front of a restaurant and you're gonna yell, I'm excited. Uh, Excuse me? I'm going to make a fool of myself. You do that for 30 days, I guarantee you'll be connected for, with tons of people. Because they're going to go, Shane, I want to be near you. You guys are excited. Now, here's the thing that I said. In anything and the ways to get to a point of a connection. You have a culture of connection. I highly recommend you learn your core values. Because if you do not know your core values as a company owner, how can you pass them on to your employees? How can you pass them on to people you do business with? Core values are extremely important. What are your core values? Integrity, leadership, respect, honesty, creativity, loyalty, kindness, ethics, dependence. These were some of mine. But if you don't know those, how can you pass them on to an employee? How can you connect them? individuals within a team atmosphere. I'm going to tell you this. Are you hiring people based on their skills or their attitude and their core values? Because it's already been proven we can teach anybody skills. This morning when I came in, I was with Brady. Brady, we had to go through about 10, 15 minutes to get things kind of hooked up correctly. Okay? And I would say this. He's got a great attitude. He's got great core values. He can teach anybody skills. The next thing I would say is this. Learn your limiting beliefs of your peers and your coworkers. Why would you want to know this? I say this. 
When you know the limiting belief, I'll never move up to the company, I'll never make a raise, the upper management always has things. When you know people's limiting beliefs, you'll have better conversations, you get to a better place. The other thing that I would say is this. I'd say there's a solution to every problem. Prime was right. When I started my business, I was real simple. I wanted to watch cars, I wanted to detail cars. When I was 17, I broke my neck and I was paralyzed from the neck down. I've had that happen to me four times. Four times. So I'm convinced there's a solution to every problem. But within a company, if you are constantly the person that always has the answer and you're not accepting your coworkers' solution to a problem, your connection, the culture of connection, does not happen. The next one is this. View. Vulnerability. It's leadership. And the reason why I say that is this. When you are intentionally practicing vulnerability, you open up communication that I never think that you've ever had. People get the authenticity, they know you're genuinely doing that. The next thing I would say is create a platform to hold your organization transparent. When I was 16, 17, and 18, I was very, very clear with all my employees. You want to see my books? Now, that's up to you. My employees were able to see my books, exactly what was happening, exactly how much we're making, exactly how we were treating our clients. And you're thinking, well, that's real interesting. I don't think I want to open my books to people. Well, be more transparent what you're doing in your co company. Your employees will feel more connected. The next thing is, in person meeting a platform, you want to build unity, trust, and accountability. Now, on that, I would say there are different platforms. There's Slack, there's Meta. There, you have a company where you might have a platform. Build a platform where your employees can see this. I will guarantee you they will feel more connected to you, to the company, and to the purpose of the company. When you do that, schedule walk-in calls. Be like, what's a walk-in call? Anybody know what a walk-in call is? I got one hand back there. Okay, everybody smile a little bit. I'm wondering if you're still awake. Okay, a walk-in call. We sit in the office all day long, right? Now. I recommend a walking call to build culture and here's a walk. When you walk, you're gonna get exercise, you're gonna get fresh air, you're not in the office, you're not in the same old grind. Get out and walk. If you have a 20 minute meeting that you're gonna schedule in the office, I highly recommend you do a walking call. It's great for company health as well. It's great for connection. Next thing I tell you is a 20 minute speed date. Well, Brian already mentioned that we're going to be doing speed dating up here. We're going to be networking. So the one thing to build culture within your company is do a 20-minute speed date. What I want to do is John, Doug, Sally, Jessica, Dana. I want to schedule 20 minutes that we walk. We basically sit somewhere, and we have 20 minutes, and we talk nothing about business. Cecilia, tell me about your daughter. Tell me that she's a parent now. She's out of school now. I want to know these things. It's her why. When you discover the why of someone, you build better connection. The other thing is be uncomfortable. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. And the reason why I say this is when you have a willingness to be uncomfortable with your employees, to talk about them, to find out about them, Wow, my sister just got raped. My brother's getting divorced. The things that you open up with people, when you get genuine, when people can share with you, they will follow you anyway. These are ways to build a culture of connection, adopt an empathetic, establish empathetic. When you're empathetic, it shows that you're human. When you're able to relate to a person who just lost a brother, a wife that just lost a job, and you're empathetic, it shows that you're human. It shows that you can connect on a different level. If all we're connecting on work, and we're not connecting as human beings, 
We're never going to have a culture of connection. I go back to this one for a reason. Once you set your core values, most people will set them a week, two weeks, and what will happen is this, is it will basically forget their core values. They won't live there. So in that, get a platform where you can keep informed on the clients that you're working with. If I'm one of your employees and I want the more connection within the company, tell me how we're doing business. If you're keeping your secrets about your clients, people don't want to work for you. They won't get close to you. The other one is this. I love this touch point. New employee mentorship. I was down in Bryan, Texas, talking to a fire department. What we had set up was a mentorship of all new hires that came on the fire department. And it was a great thing to do because they went through a full year, and it was not to show them all the bad. It was to show them the ropes along the way. Team building workshops. You know, you're gonna hear from Shelly and G right after me, and we both do coaching, we both do workshops, and I highly recommend trying to cover a culture of connection in 15 minutes is really hard. So get a hold of Shelly, get a hold of me. We can set up um, hours, we can set up four hour workshops, and believe me, she's been doing it forever, and she's fantastic, and I highly recommend you getting a hold of us. Again, do challenges and trivia games to keep people involved. Oh, there's that dreaded monthly karaoke. You're all kind of laughing. Really? <laughs> really? You want to get connected? Get people in a place to go sing. You will get connected real fast. I guarantee you, some of you taking the adult auditions, and that might help. Recognition and rewards. Here's the real interesting thing about recognition and rewards. Everybody loves to be recognized. We have our sponsors on here, and thank you, that need. We love to hear from you. We love to be recognized. Are you doing sales awards? Better yet, how are you recognizing your employees? Because not every employee wants to be recognized the same way. Some people are, no, 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 I don't, you know, don't put me out in public. Don't do that. My girlfriend does that. Don't put me out in front of people. You know, she doesn't like that aspect. So I make sure I get connected with her. I slow down for I just don't put her out front. There are different ways. You can do purses. You can do uh, vacations. You can do a lot of things. <coughs> Pay for one of your employees breakfast for a full week. Do something different. And here's what I would tell you. Having a culture of connection is not hard. You have to do the work. You have to make sure that in doing the work, you put forth the effort. It just does not happen naturally. It doesn't happen. With that, I will say this, that in wrapping up, you want to make sure that your employees love what they do. Ask them. They will tell you. Because we're dealing with the great resignation. We're dealing with those things. People are leaving jobs, sometimes without even telling you. I would say this, to get a deep culture of connection, when it's in your company, people feel a sense of belonging, of community. They will find you, they will do anything for you, they will walk through fire with you. And a culture of connection is not hard. It basically is this, it's connecting on a human level. That company that I started at 16 years old, at the age of 19, I sold it for $750,000. That was a mobile detail company. It was not worth $750,000. My knowledge on how I grew it was, if you want to have connection, Brene Brown said it best. I've got four or five questions for you that you can ask people at your table and around and that would be this. In an interview, do you hire someone based on their skills or because of their core values and attitude? That's the first question. Second like one is, as an owner or upper manager, are you being vulnerable with your team or do you see vulnerability as a weakness? It's another thing that you can ask yourself. Do you have a platform within your company or work environment where employees can connect outside of work? Not all about work. And the last one is this. Are you rewarding your employees? And how are you rewarding them? Have you asked them how they like to be rewarded? Because they will tell you. If there's a possibility to go to Sun Valley, number one, I want to work for your company. 
And number two, I can throw a great party up there. I want to say thank you. This is a blessing from God that I'm up in front of you. It's a blessing that I can see so many smiling faces. I hope in the 15 minutes that I have, which could be a three-week, three-month course, I hope I give you some tips on how to better create a culture of connection. Thank you very much.